All right, here we are back with episode three of our Path of Exile Beginner's Guide slash playthrough. Uh, on our ranger here, we just got to the ship graveyard last time we checked off. I'm going to kind of show you my, my strategy for getting through this kind of zone. So uh, there's a couple of things we, that are in this zone. There is a sub quest or a side quest that gives a skill point. Uh, that involves going down into a cave and getting something that we, uh, flame that we use to uh, give to Fairgrave. Spoiler alert for the story, I guess. So what I try to do is I find and I locate the ship graveyard cave. And then I kind of just run through the zone other than that. Um, and I go to the end of the zone. I see Aurion down there. I'll kind of pick him up on the way here. But because we're already level 12... Uh, we're going to, oops, there's my Siege Ballista. We'll go right to the Cavern of Wrath. So we're basically running right through the zone, uh, kind of trying to locate things on the way. Then we go back, and once you're level 12, uh, if you're under level 12, you won't be able to use it. But once you are, you get a new skill. Uh, we could get Rain of Arrows, Lightning Arrow, um, new Spectral Shield Throw. This is on a new patch. Um, so here, I think... I'm going to I'm going to use Tornado Shout eventually, but I think I'm going to use Rain of Arrows until that point. Lightning Arrow with greater multiple projectiles is also very good, uh, but I think I'm going to go Rain of Arrows. It's not spectacular. Uh, it requires projectile speed to be really good, but we go right back into Merveil's Cave here, go into the ship graveyard, and uh, yeah, use utilize our new skill. We'll have our Mirage Archer kind of laying down the. Uh, laying down some things here. We can also, as you go, if you see new bases for items, for instance, this longbow, a 6 to 25 is its base attack. It is a slower base, uh, but you can uh, kind of take the chance to craft it. Like if I want to throw a transmutation, I get attack speed, which is not terrible. Um, and we can do that. And if we had an additional orb, we could try to craft like percentage damage or just flat physical damage. Get a chromatic orb back here. Heavy belt's nice if you need strength requirement. Say you're playing a red gem of some sort. Or uh, equipment, like armor equipment that requires strength. You can get that heavy belt. It'll get you strength. And then we just run through this cave. Uh, quickly going through it. These guys do a lot of cold damage. So we can kind of avoid them if you have low cold resistance. Alright, got another level up. I'm just going to keep running, uh, kind of fire off, destroy most of the stuff. I can get a full passive reset if I'd like. Uh, I don't really want that. I'm going to go up to the shadow start up here and get the like crit and life up here. We're going to not get the uh, the passive re the passive start here, or re restart. Alright, and we just keep going should be at the end of the zone first i would normally cut to the end but yep here we are fairly quick uh there's a boss strangle charm we're just gonna you know oh we can also lay down our our ballista if we want for some residual damage we get the all flame um i can grab this coral see if it's any good coral <laughs> uh 1 to 15, okay, so some lightning damage to attack. I kind of like that better. Yeah, I like damage in the beginning. You don't need that much tankiness to begin with. Um, then we can actually go back to town and go to the waypoint if you have a lot of extra portal scrolls. If not, you don't have to. You can just run through the zone again. But usually Fairgraves is over by this book over here. Um, and you give him the... You give him the flame or whatever it is the the all flame I'm sure he has a good reason for needing this from us um, then we're gonna spam him with our skills and good man bad situation story of my life all right let's go back uh, we can grab our skill point Skill point we get from Bestel. Bestel gives us a lot of skills, all of them except for the Granddaddy Crab, basically. Um, we're gonna use that to keep going towards the Shadow Star, and off we go to Mervale's Cavern. 
Now, Merveil's Cavern, it's nice to have some cold resist here. If we look at our defense, we have a zero cold resist. So, uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. You're fine without cold resist. It just requires that you dodge. Uh, another way you can get by is you can go and either buy or uh, craft. Ooh, a composite bow. There you go. You can either buy or craft a... Uh, a ring that has cold resistance on it. Uh, you can do this by selling an iron ring and a blue gem if you want to craft it. I'm sorry, blue is for lightning. It's actually a green gem. You can sell the green gem. Uh, this is Merveil's daughter, the boss zone, uh, Amarissa, daughter of Merveil. So we just take her down, check out this longbow. Oops. Uh, longbow, physical damage, attack speed, perfect. Excellent. All right, blink arrow goes on here. Uh, do we have blue socket? Yes, we do. And boom, we go from 144 all the way up to 206 DPS. So big upgrade. Just, oh, alchemy orb, nice. Uh, you're just kind of looking for upgrades as you go. Uh, I don't really need to craft this composite bow anymore. I'll just look for a rare composite bow and... I kind of do that, I skip bases as I go through. So if I get a really good longbow, I'm not gonna, I'll identify composite bows, but I'm not gonna bother trying to craft one. Uh, generally speaking, you don't wanna go any more than about 10 levels without, oops, went through the zone again, crafting a new one. But yeah, we go through the Cavern of Wrath. I'm just gonna cut it to Merveil and then we'll do the Merveil fight. All right, I'm coming back early because we're coming upon something I don't think I've explained yet. Uh, I'm going to clear out the shrine real quick first. Usually there's a lot of monsters by shrines, but by the shrine, you can see it on the map. Uh, it is a essence creature. So these are creatures that are kind of uh, frozen in crystal, as you can see. And they have a muttering essence of anger. You can see which essence. They can have, well, technically up to four essences in one. They become increasingly more powerful depending on the tier and how many essences they have. Um, and there's a few different things we can go and do with them that I'll explain later on. But mostly what you have to know that you have to do is you can click on it three times It'll release it from its essence, and then you fight the creatures that are released. Uh, once you destroy the rare, then you will get the essence that was in it. And the essence, um, kind of wish I hadn't thrown the composite bow on the ground so I could show you, but basically the essence will give you a guaranteed effect. It works like an alchemy orb. It turns a uh, an item into a rare, but it has a guaranteed property. And the guaranteed properly depends on the item. As you can see, if I were to apply this to an armor, for instance, it would get 12 to 17 fire resist, which is pretty handy. Um, and if I were to put it on a uh, two or a bow, I would get 8 to 10 to 15 to 18 because it's not a melee weapon, fire damage. So pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool uh, addition to the game. It was from a, an expansion. I, I don't even remember how long ago at this point, but... Uh, Essence League was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. All right, and we're pretty much here. I got a greater life flask. Uh, I'm not going to really have a chance to fill it up. Cut, cut, cut. All right, so here we are at Mervale's Lair. Go ahead and go into it. We're going to lay down our Siege Ballista. She fires a straight... She does a melee attack. And then she lays down this like frost rain and shoots these frost spears at you as well. Uh, the frost spears do a lot of damage, so don't stand in them. The frost rain actually does too. See, uh, I just got hit by one of them. She shoots a volley of like six or seven of them. And just one of them did quite a bit. And she has two stages. So the second one, she summons adds from the little pool. And she also basically leaves these pillars of water, which slow you and do damage over time if you stand in them. Uh, she also does a, a scream. The scream will basically, uh, the scream will also slow you and do damage to you. It's all cold damage, basically. Her wave that she shoots in front of her also does cold damage. Uh, we made pretty quick work of her. Get these leather scale boots and see if we uh, can get lucky with it. these. Get some movement speed. We do get movement speed. Uh, we need somewhere to put our critical strikes gem though. Uh, what you can do, I'm going to do it right now in fact, is you can pick up a couple of spare weapons. 
Uh, I'll just identify these. Uh, it doesn't matter what's on them. Put them in a second inventory slot. I can't use this because of the required level, but this one, I can put this one up here, and then I can put my increased critical strikes gem in the second weapon uh, slot. It'll still level up that way, and you can have a couple of different... Uh, gems leveling up basically up to six gems leveling up in your alternate weapon slot as you're going through which is fairly handy and now i can use these boots which give me movement speed and life and strength and dex so really really good boots here for early on and we're done with Merveil. the next zone you get into uh normally i'd cut it off here but eh, we're just gonna go to the town we're in act two now um you get this nice little monkey forest monkeys come down from the tree there are bigger monkeys that we'll run into probably hopefully so i can show you those but <laughs> uh there are these little bug things i don't actually know what they are but um they're usually accompanied in other zones by bigger like kind of mother bug things that lay them but in these other zones they're just by themselves everything in here is really squishy and it's a fairly linear zone i say as i go into a dead end so for the most part you can just run through it and just kind of attack things as you go there you go so there's these bigger monkeys and if they're near trees let me pull one near trees for for you they can call monkeys down the smaller monkeys from the trees um so that's pretty neat we're gonna get into the forest encampment and um Act 2, I think I'm going to make its own video because I have a really special way of running Act 2. Uh, it's a really difficult to maneuver through zone the first time you run through. You might get backed up or a little confused as to where to go. I have a way that runs it very fast, so I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye! Hello friends, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming. Thank you for watching the video. Behind Eyes Gaming is brought to you by viewers like you. Please don't forget to check out my Patreon in the link below, and also don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future videos, live streams, and more. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!